Psych One students, how are we doing out there? Wanted to take a beat here and introduce you to our annotated bibliography assignment. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be learning about research methods, specifically how to read research and then report on it. And so this comes from chapter one, the research methods section of unit one. And with this, our main goal with a science and specifically with psychology, the social behavioral science of it is to really understand how to work with the literature that's out there. And so as a researcher or a psych one student, just getting to know and learn about psychological research, it's important to become familiar with the reporting process. And so there's many, many methods to this and research methods in and of itself is a whole nother singer, singular subject that you can actually take a course in research methods in our psychology department. So this is not necessarily meant to go into great granular detailed level when it comes to research methods and even annotations, but rather just to really familiarize yourself with it. So the intro to this is really, if you look at your textbook in chapter one and you read a paragraph or even a sentence and you see and notice at the end of that sentence, a little what's called citation, you'll see uh, someone's last name or maybe two individual last names with a comma and then an actual year. That's a citation. And then you can go to the back of the book and you can look at that citation in its full reference point. And so that's called a reference. Taken together, all those references are what's called reference page. And in this specific situation, when we put more than one reference together and we're reading literature, and let's say we have four or five citations that are full citations, we would say that that is called and considered an annotated bibliography. And so with this, we're going to learn more about that process. It's really important for Psych 1 students to start to learn about what is the research process? What does it look like? Especially, what does it look like to read research? And then what does it look like to be able to report on that in a very systematic way? And so that is what we're gonna be doing here with this assignment. What we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna share my screen and you should be able to see right here the actual annotated bibliography instructions. And I'm not going to read all of this, so you want to go through and read this, but I do want to show you a, a couple things. And so for this assignment, what you're going to do is first you're going to read all of these right here. And we go down to instructions. And if you look down here, I have provided for you an actual research article. Now, just locating specific research articles is really it's a bit of an art and a science in and of itself with just with that, but that's not the scope of this class. And so I have handpicked a research article that has to deal with what's called growth mindset. We'll actually learn about Carol Dweck's work in the later part of this class. And so this article does go together with the content of this class, but I wanted to take some of the process out of it because you don't need to learn how to research in terms of locating articles just yet. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this to actually get your article. You're going to read through that article in a systematic way. And that is the point of this assignment is that reading research is much different than reading maybe a fictional book. Reading academic literature is not necessarily done linearly. And so it's not meaning, it's not meant to be completed from chapter one, two, three, four, and five sequentially. But it's, it's actually done in a certain way. So my recommendation is to, first of all, you're gonna get your, you will get your article from this location right here at the bottom of instructions tab, and then scroll down here. And then I have provided you a template that I'll show you here in just a bit. And then what I would do is 
before you start even reading the actual research article that I have provided for you is to click right here where it says reading research articles. And so that will show you exactly what to do in terms of your method for systematically reading a research article. So that's where we would start first. So I just wanted to show you this right here. This is all of our detailed instructions. This is where you go to this tab. There's three parts you'll click on, the actual article right here. Secondly, the annotated bibliography that you're going to use to fill out and to complete this assignment. And then what's going to guide you in terms of reading the research article that I have provided is right here. Is third is clicking on and looking at this reading research article. And so that what I'll do now is I'll click on this for you. And let me see, this might not come up, but let me see if it does. If you click on this annotated bibliography, let me go ahead and click on that. Oh, there it goes, it does, it shows it right here. So you can actually download this yourself, but you're gonna be turning this in right here. So you're going to download it and fill this out or create your own template. This is based off of APA 7th edition, the most current edition of the American Psychological Association's 7th edition of writing format. And so you, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to go ahead and fill in this information right here. There's We have headers. It's all located for you. It's actually all not located, but it's all created for you. Again, if you take a research methods course, you will have to manually create this yourself. I have provided you an example. So I just wanted to take a second here to show you this example. This is a, an example that, that I have created in my own research. And this is not for you to copy. In fact, it is for you to, to, to get it you know, a better understanding of what it's going to look like, what your annotated bibliography is going to look like. You're going to have your research citation right here at the top. It's going to be at the top right here. And that is going to be in the APA 7th edition format. And so you can actually just Google that and it can show you how to actually construct that or you can go to different site machines that can format that for you in an APA style. So what we're talking about here is if we scroll back up here, when you click on this growth mindset article, this is the main article that you're gonna be reading. This is the article, but you have to cite it. What does that mean? You're not just supposed to write the actual title and then turn it in, but rather, there's a specific format, the title, the author, the year, all that, let me scroll back down right here, is all wrapped up in what's called a full reference. That's your full reference right there. So you are to include at the top right here of your annotative bibliography, this full reference, which is right there. And let me go back here. This is your title page. You'll have this and then your actual page of your annotation, which should include this right here, your full reference, and then your summary. Now, what goes in the summary? You're going to read your research article and go back right here, this in a systematic way, not just from A to B, meaning not just from page one all the way to the last page, because that's really not how we go about reading academic literature, especially peer reviewed literature that way, but we read it in a specific way that I'll show you in a second. But as you go through and you read, you will organize your summary like this. It could be one or two paragraphs, just like this. And you're gonna include certain things such as the purpose, the results, the methods. I will show you here in just a second, specifically and exactly what you are to include for this annotation. So let me go ahead and scroll down here and click on this. So it says reading research article, articles in general. This is what my strong recommendation for you is. This is my actual, my own notes that I have learned that I use currently right now in my own research when it comes to reading scholarly material, academic literature. And so 
There's a few things here that are recommended. It's really not even a few. It's only two. One and two, read the title first, believe it or not. That's you want to start there. That becomes more important when you're looking and trying to locate research that's relevant to your area. And then read the abstract. The abstract is at the very top. Okay, It's basically a summary in a very succinct, concise form. This is the abstract. So that would be the first thing. The second thing that, that we would suggest reading. Now, number three through seven, you're going to include these things in your summary. And here's what we mean about reading in a systematic way. So it's nonlinear. What that means is the first thing you want to really locate, the first section is the findings flat out. What is the research? What is What has it revealed? What's the conclusions? What's the findings? So instead of reading pages one through 21 straight, the suggestion is to start with the abstract just to familiarize yourself with the content and the trajectory of where you're going with this. And then scroll all the way down to locate the findings slash results. So somewhere down here, so there's the conclusions. And then if we look at results, and it's probably where, where are we at? Implications, or no, it's not implications. Let's look here. So here's data analysis and here's results. So you're gonna read, that's the suggestion first is to start right out and, and see what has been revealed based on this research. Now you're gonna see a lot of numbers. You'll see what's called quantitative numbers. You'll see qualitative data, which is more narrative uh, work, but don't get too confused with the numbers. Just look to see flat out what they found, okay? And so really you might want, you're gonna struggle a little bit reading through the, the results section, but that's the suggestion first, just to see what exactly did they find from this. That's the first thing. And then you're going to report on that. So in your summary, you're going to report where, like I said, right here, results, you're going to write a sentence or two as to what they found. What was the research, that actual article, what did they find? Now, you'll see how I have some of these out of order, and that's because I'm doing something a little different here. I just wanted to show you kind of a framework of what your work's going to look like, but you might not have the purpose at the very beginning. You can certainly do that, but I will say this. You need to have all of these things in here. You need to show what was shown in the actual article by including the findings, the methodology, the literature review, that's basically just the introduction, the background of the actual research, not the introduction, but rather it's a, uh, we're looking at here, the, the problem space, the background of what's being explored in the research. Then we have the introduction. You see how it's, this is almost towards the end? So it's, it's almost backwards compared to your typical reading that's more sequential. And then we have our discussion. Okay. Now, the reason why, the first thing, let me just go back, is that we need to have these things in here. Number three through seven. That needs to be where? That needs to be right here. Really the meat and potatoes of your annotation. Okay. This is your annotation. Annotation is really just your own style of note taking when it comes to the articles that you're reading. So those are going to be in here. And the, the reason why this might be seemed what's called ubiquitous, which means it's kind of all over the place, you're going to read your findings first, then your conclusions, then you might jump down to your methods, and then go back up to your lit review, and then circle all the way back to your introduction. The reason is, is because as a student in psychology, if you continue on with this and you major in psychology, or even, even in other disciplines, when you're reading academic research, the first thing is, is we want to really try to evaluate articles. What that means is the first thing we want to do is we want to read the findings and conclusions to you know, really better ascertain the findings in that what we're trying to make certain that the research has revealed something that we can generalize something that we can actually use, we can apply it. If not, then we don't even need to go down to number three and four. We don't need to continue to waste our time reading 20, 30 pages of a peer-reviewed article. And so 
However, I've already picked an article for you. So we actually will just follow this format and this protocol just so that you're familiar with the reading of peer-reviewed scholarly work. But I just want to share with you, that's one of the reasons why we read in a non-linear fashion is that you just kind of build on your critical skills, meaning you're trying to find if there's efficacy of the actual research. Does it mean anything for you? Can you use it? That's why you would read the findings first. Then you would read the conclusions, okay? Because the conclusions might have further recommendations for research. Then if that satisfies you, then you would read the methods because then we want to familiarize ourselves with the actual methodology, methodologies and instrumentations that took place in that research and then on and on it goes. And so that's one of the reasons why we read systematically systematically, not in a linear fashion. And so that's one of the key components that we're going to use right here is this is really just for you. This right here, reading research is for you to, to guide you to facilitate the process as you're reading through this very technical world of peer reviewed articles that we're working from. So let me go back here. Let me see if I can Go back and just really show you some things here. So overall, you're going to be reading an article, a research article that I have provided for you right here. You're going to write a review and show that you can actually cite this in an APA format. So here's the article right here that I provided that you would click right there. And scroll down so you read the article based off of this right here which is the somewhat of a framework in terms of how to read articles research articles systematically this will guide you then you actually download the template and you start your annotation process again annotation fancy word for note taking okay when it comes to reading academic research academic literature so this is APA format. In fact, this whole template is APA format. Then you are to cite the research article that I have provided you in this APA format. And then you are to write a summary. And the summary is, is systematic, right? You're writing specific things. What is that? These things right here. You're going to be writing on what was found. You're going to write on the conclusion. What was the method? Now, let me say here on the method, there's many methods. I got to tell you, there's, there's over 20 something, 25 different methodologies in psychological research. However, if we zoom out and we look at the umbrella of methodologies, what we're looking for here really is quantitative or is it qualitative? Quantitative means it has to do with collection of data. It's more numeric in nature. Qualitative is... There's not really collection of data, but it's more of a narrative data in that it's more interview. So the research is based on some sort of interview or semi-structured interview. And then there's a collection of themes. And so the narrative is really extracted out and then it's reported back. So instead of using numbers, it's really more of a narrative. And really that's really what we're looking at here for you. Uh, as you get more advanced, that's a whole nother ball game. If you take a research methods course, it's going to be asking for much more. But right now, we're just really looking at quantitative or qualitative, or there's even mixed methods, which uses both of those. So that is that. That is some of the details of this assignment. Let me see if I can stop share here and then just really wrap this up. What we're doing here to be as simple as we can, even though, you know, a lot of things are simple, it's really hard to reduce things down to their individual parts. What we're doing here is you're going to read that article that I showed you. You're going to read the article, then you're going to download the template, and you're going to learn how to actually write out that citation, which is the full reference in APA format, seventh edition. That's what you're going to do, the first thing. Then, as you're reading through the article using the attachment that I sent out to you that I just showed you, which is reading research articles, you're going to use that to guide the format of your summary. 
So fundamentally, you're going to have two pages that you're going to turn in that I created that template for. You're going to have your cover page, your title page. That's what that first page is. And then the second page is going to have the full reference in APA format, seventh edition. And then below that, you're going to have a 250 word minimum summary of what you read in a systematic format, which is what I just showed you in the reading research articles framework that I just showed you. So that is really what we have. And so I am not going to lecture and explain with great detail on how to, what are the mechanics and format of APA 7th edition. You can look at that. You can go to Google and Google Scholar can show you those. And there's many good resources for you. You can actually use site machines, site machine engines online that all you need to do is plug in the title and the year and some other information that you have directly that you get from the research article I provided. And then it will extract out the actual seventh, the seventh edition of the APA format. And so I do not want to, I'm not gonna show you any specific websites or uh, ascribe to any particular way because I'm not affiliate of those websites or anything like that. This is for you to go out there and research a little bit when it comes to that. Should you have any questions on any of this, please reach out, let me know, but this should definitely be a good start in terms of figuring out and not figuring out, but really how to go deep when it comes to reading research and then being able to report on that. All right. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. You guys take care.